you guys. Um, this is uh, Ron Batum uh, with Atlanta Functional Programming, uh, and thanks for coming for another episode of the Common Lift Study Group. We're starting a little bit early today, um, primarily because we're going to be trying something new with the stream, so I do apologize for some of the people that know that usually come in at our scheduled time at 5.30. Uh, today, uh, we'll be uh, having um, Michael Fiano, one of our um, uh, frequent um, visitors of uh, uh, the Common List Study Group uh, and a very experienced Common List developer giving us a tutorial on how to set up uh, SpaceMax, uh, which is a, uh, a distribution that's built on top of Emacs for development that gives you some nice advanced capabilities. And specifically, um, he'll be going through setting up and using uh, a layer that will allow us to use Sly, which is a successor to Slime for common list development. So uh, without further ado, uh, Michael, take it away. Hi, how you doing? Can everybody see my screen? I can. Um, others? Uh, I'm guessing some folks are going to be pinging on the... Uh... Yes, I can. <clears throat> okay, well, Ram and I have been talking for a while about um, starting a actual common list project from scratch um, and developing the whole thing on stream just to get everybody familiar with the workflow of common list uh, development. Uh, but before we do that, we have to get everybody on the same page as far as having an editor with, you know, the proper common list integration uh, built in and everything like that. So that's what today's stream is going to be about. Um, we're going to walk through setting up Roswell with a common list imp implementation and then plugging it into SpaceMax. So the first thing we should do is um, install Roswell. Um, I know Ron, Ron touched on this a few times, but um, I'm just going to walk through it really quick. If you go to Roswell's uh, webpage, it's just github.com slash Roswell slash what Roswell. Um, it has the installation instructions for whatever operating system you're on. Um, this is, <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes it's a hit or a miss. Uh, Roswell can be buggy at times, depending on the particular time of the month, I guess. <laughs> right, that's a very, um, hundred, that's an understatement. <laughs> but if it works, it works well, and you don't have to mess with it after that. Right. Um, um, you should go and ins install it for whatever particular operating system you're running on. I already have it, I believe, on this machine. Um, I'm running Arch Linux. It's obviously going to be different for you. Um, particularly because to install a package, I have an alias, which is actually using AUR man. Um, it's going to be different for you, I'm sure. Um, but you just install Roswell. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, it should be in your um, Linux repository, package repository, and if it's not, you can just install it in the instructions on the web page. I'm going to go ahead and install it right now. Um, while it's installing, I just wanted to mention for folks who are running Debian um, Linux, um, there is a Debian package that's on uh, uh, that's on the Roswell wiki um, uh, that you can just simply download and install using dpkg. Um, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, Ubuntu or it, and Debian 9 does not have it in their package manager. Um, you would have to install it from the Debian package that's available on the website, I mean, on the GitHub um, wiki. Okay, so after it's installed, um, what we're going to do is we're going to run ROS, R-O-S, enter, and it's going to say there's no SBCL installed, it's going to download and install that, and then it's going to go ahead and set up Quick Lisp, and that takes 30 seconds or so, depending on your hardware. Um, yeah, let's just give this a minute.
Now I'm assuming that it's always getting the latest um, SBCL when it does the setup, right? I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now that it's installed, um, we should have a SBCL products list installed. Yep. We're at SBCL 1.4.9. Now what I like to do, this, this part is not required at all, what I like to do is I like to install the SBCL source distribution rather than the binary that's sitting on some server that somebody else compiled. I like to install the source myself, which is just ROS install SBCL. And that will go ahead and compile. I'm not going to wait for that because that, that would take about five minutes, so I'll stop that. But you might want to do that. Okay, so we have Roswell installed. We have Quick Lisp installed. It comes with Roswell. We have SBCL installed. Everything is installed for our common Lisp environment, um, except for our editor. And that's what we're primarily going to do today. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to spacemax.org, and we are not going to hit the download button because that's going to install the latest stable version. We don't want the latest stable version because it's pretty old. Um, all the development, especially with the common list player that I developed, is based off of the latest version of Space Max, um, not the latest stable version. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the GitHub link at the top here, and that's going to bring you to the repository page. And we're going to click on clone, and we're going to copy this link right here. Come back to our terminal, and we're going to paste it, prefix that with git clone, and at the end of it, we want to add the B flag, space develop. Actually, you know, before we do this, you want to make sure that you back up your um, current Emacs directory, which is located at in your home directory. So emacs.d, dot emacs.d in your home directory. You want to probably move that somewhere. I just like to move it to dot back like that. I already did that obviously, just so it's not gonna work here. But you want to back that up. You also want to back up if you already have a spacemax uh, installation, you probably want to back up your dot spacemax file. And your spacemax.d directory. All three of those you want to back up, get them out of the way so we don't clobber anything. So after we do that, we'll clone the repository for spacemax, passing the dash b develop flag, and we want to clone that into our emacs.d folder. Hit enter, let it install. It's all installed now. Uh, what we could do is we can start Emacs. Now I will mention that you probably want to install a, I don't know what, um, operating, what well, um, Emacs version Debian is on right now, but I would stay away from anything below 25.1. Uh, we're already on like 26.1 as far as the Emacs version. Um, you don't want to use anything too old. You might run into all sorts of problems considering SpaceMax is um, an active development and it's based off of the latest Emacs. Um, it should work with 25.1. So anything between 25.1 and 26 point whatever we're on now should work fine. I wouldn't use 24. <laughs> I think I've had quite a few problems on Windows using 24. I uh, just want to throw that out there. So we can start up Emacs. When you start it up, at the bottom in your mini buff there, you're going to see a few questions. It's going to say, what do you prefer, Vim or Emacs? We're going to hit Vim, because everything for the common list player that I developed is based off of Vim. Um, it just means that 
you're going to have uh, more simpler key bindings. It's going to be easier to perform some commands. Um, you're not going to use the traditional Emacs style key, uh, key binding commands. You're going to use Vim style. So hit enter. It's going to ask you if you want standard or minimal. Hit enter again for standard. And it's going to go ahead and install a bunch of packages. Um, That's going to take a minute or so. Ron, do you have anything to add if, as far as Windows on how to install this stuff? Yeah. Um, on Windows, uh, those of you who, who develop on Windows, um, especially um, uh, developing um, with Emacs on Windows, Emacs is D is installed in uh, your... The app data folder, right? In roaming? Yeah, it's in roaming. It's in the app data slash roaming folder. So that's one thing that you need to be aware of. Um, so when you actually clone using whatever Git client you're comfortable with, um, the SpaceMax distribution, you have to store it in your app data roaming folder. Um, you have to back up whatever Emacs D that's available there and then replace it with um, the SpaceMax distribution. Um, once you do that, um, it is basically the same thing. And in fact, I will say that... Um, uh, Roswell has actually helped in this regard, at least, um, simplifying um, development um, on Windows with um, with Common List because um, it it deals with um, all the um, uh, Lisp distributions um, in its own repository, which I think is also in the app data, if I remember correctly. I have to go and look at it again. Um, but yeah, um, it should be the same. The only thing to be worried about is it's not in where you think it is. It's not in the user slash your username folder. It's not in that home directory. It's actually in the app data directory. Mm -hmm. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, and uh, once it's done installing packages here, we can go ahead and close out of SpaceMax completely. We can do that by typing space QQ. That'll close out of the program. Um, now what we want to do is um, SpaceMax has two methods of installation, and we want to switch over to the alternate install. Um, this is so that we can install our own custom layers, um, of which the common list layer that I developed is going to use. So we want to switch that over. And the way we do that is what SpaceMax just ran for the first time, what it did was it created a file called... Um, space max, dot space max in your home directory. What we want to do, keeping that in mind, we want to first create a dot space max dot b directory in our home directory. Then we want to copy or actually move the dot space max file into our space max dot b directory, but we want to name it init dot el. Once, once that's done, um, we might get some errors, but let's just try running Space Max now. Okay, oh, that's perfect. Don't worry about any of those warnings or anything. That's just saying that it can't find the default font that comes with Space Max. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, now that Space Max is restarted, what we want to do is we want to edit the configuration file. Um, and we do that by typing space, F is in Frank, E, D is in dog, F, E, D. And that'll bring up the whole Space Max configuration file. And we don't have to pay attention to most of this. But what we want to do is we want to plug in Roswell first. And the way we do that is we find the well, there's multiple ways to do that, but for simplicity's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the section called date.spacemax slash init. No, I'm sorry. That's not right. Dot spacemax slash user init. And after the comment here, we want to add a new piece of code. Um, we want to write defr i dash lisp dash implementations 
And then we want to add this form right here. We'll call it SPCL. And then we want to give a path to our Roswell command. And that's what oh. we want to do is we want to... Hey, Michael, sorry to interrupt. Could you please yeah. um, increase the, the font size by chance? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I meant to do that. Yes, we'll do. Um, everybody see that? Much better. Thanks. So what we want to do is we want to type def var, slide, list implementations, quote, and then we have um, a list of lists here. The first item is going to be SBCL. I'm going to start a new list, and we want to basically type the Roswell command. Um, every word of the command is in a new string, so we do ros. The next word is going to be the L flag, which is going to tell us what list um, that Roswell manages we want to start. That's going to be SBCL dash bin. Um, it would just be SBCL if you installed the source distribution of SBCL like I was talking about before. But since I didn't do that, I'm going to do SBCL dash bin. And the last string is run, which is just going to run the REPL. If you have that in place, we can go ahead and save. And you do that by typing space F S. And whenever you type space, it's going to pop up a menu on the bottom, so you don't have to remember all this stuff. Um, it's all pretty much separated into what you would expect. Um, space, and then if you look on the bottom where it says F is files. F, oh, it's a little too big, so I can't see the whole menu on the bottom here when I increase my font size. But basically, you just got to remember file save, FS. Everything is um, mnemonic like that, so you don't have to remember too much. So once it's saved, we can close out of Space Max again. And we're going to install the common list, uh, common list Sly layer. Sly is just an alternative to Slime, which you're probably already familiar with. Um, it just has a few extra features, and um, I don't know, I've, I like it better. <laughs> You don't have to use it. You can go ahead and use Slime. The setup is pretty much the same, except it's built into Space Max already. Um, this, you have to download manually. And you do that, you can go to my GitHub, github.com slash mfiano slash common lisp sly. And you can clone that. And what we want to do is we want to change directory to our spacemax.d directory that we created earlier. And in there right now, we just have init.el and spacemax copied a, a file that we don't have to worry about. But what we want to do is we want to create a new folder called layers. And that's where we're going to clone our common list sly layer. So we can go ahead and clone that into layers. And that's all we have to do there. Um, we can start up X again. It's not going to find our layer automatically. We have to tell it to load it. We do that by typing space FED to edit the configuration again. And all the way at the top, there is a yep, space max layers configuration function. Um, now oh, there's a lot of comments here. I'm getting lost. <laughs> um, so yeah, oh right here, dot, dot space max dash, uh, dash configuration dash layers. It's going to list all the layers that are loaded up when you start space max. So we're going to add at the end our common list slide layer. Save the file. Now, if we close and reopen Space Max, it should load up our I layer. It should download a few packages. Yep. And now it's completely installed. Um, everything as far as common list development should now be fully installed, including our editor, Slime, well, Sly, which is a Slime fork. 
SBCL, Quick Lisp, and Roswell. All that should be perfectly installed and ready to be used. Um, what we can do is we can open a Lisp file, or if you already have a project, And you do that, by the way, by typing space FF for find file. And once we have a project opened, it doesn't matter which file you have open in that project. Um, what you can do is once that file is open, type in comma, single quote. And that's going to ask you at the bottom, um, versions differ. Now this is just a problem with the way... Um, the Emacs package repository, Melpa, distributes Sly. Um, for the last six months or so, they've been doing it wrong, and I'm not sure exactly what they're doing wrong about it, but this question pops up because of it. We can fix that. Let's just hit no for now. We'll fix that right now. What we can do, we can space space, bring up the uh, main space max menu, and type in recompile. What we're looking for is this one, SpaceMax Recompile Alpha. And I'm sorry, my font size, size is small again. Let me increase that for you. Hold on. If you type in space space, recompile, looking for SpaceMax slash recompile alpha. And we'll hit enter on that. That's going to go ahead and recompile the bytecode for all the uh, Emacs packages. So it could take a minute or two. Um, so you're saying by recompiling Elba, you will be able to um, get around that difference? Um, it's a, it's a bytecode yes, issue? Yes. I, I think what they're doing is they're somehow distributing a stale, uh, fast, I'm not a fastle, um, a ELC Emacs bytecode file Okay. with the, with the, uh, with the Sly package, um, and that needs that it, it, there's some difference with the source files with that. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but to get around it, all you have to do is update all the bytecode, and that's done with that command: space max recompile alpha. Okay, excellent. Um, it, it's it's a weird bug, and it still hasn't been fixed almost a year later. So I'm not sure um, why it, why it occurs. I just know how to fix it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so yeah, once that's recompiled, um, we can go back to what we were doing before, and we can start up Sly by typing comma. This has to be in a in a common list source buffer, by the way. We already opened that. Uh, type in comma, single quote, and that's going to set. That's going to pop up your repo, and now we have our common list development. Um, uh, integration built into our editor, all ready to roll. Um, everything about it is is totally installed. We can install a Quick Lisp um, package just like that. Alexandria is installed. Um, we can um, let's let's run through some editing commands here. Um, I'm going to move this to the side. Um, See how do I do that? Sorry, this is not my normal configuration, so I'm trying to remember commands. Okay, so let's move this to the side. We got a source buffer. Um, let me just open a real file instead of an ASD. So here's some common list code. Um, there's, there's a few niceties for working with Common Lisp um, that are built into the Sly layer. Um, everything's already pre-configured. You don't have to set anything up for this to work. Um, and most of it is available by typing space K. Now, it's going to pop up a bunch of stuff. Um, I only use a handful of these commands. But... Um, a few of the popular ones that I use are wrap, which we type W for that. And that's going to wrap an extra pair of parens around the form that you're on. 
Um, notice how in the bottom that it's pink in the bottom left here? This means that we're in Lisp mode. Any key that we press is from that initial menu that we saw when we press space K. I'll do it again so you can see. Any key that we press when it's pink is going to be one of these commands. Right now we're in normal state. We haven't entered by pressing uh, by by pushing the first key that we want to enter Lisp state for. Um, right now we're still in normal state, which is the normal, you know, every at, at, um, all different space max commands are available in normal state. Um, it's not until we press space K and then the first letter that it turns to pink. And unfortunately, the menu disappears after the first letter, so you don't know what you can push anymore. You just have to remember these things. <laughs> or you can just enter, exit the mode by pressing escape, and we're back to orange now, normal state. And we can do it again, space K, if we forget. Um, W, like I said, is to wrap an extra pair of parens. It doesn't matter where in the form we are. We can be over here and press space K, W. It's going to put it right around key lane. Um, that's just one command I like to use all the time. There's also unwrap, which is going to get rid of it. Capital W. And it disappears. Another one I like to use. Let me get rid of these. is the slurp command, um, and that's S. And what that's going to do, uh, we'll put it right here. If we press S, space K, S, I'm going to rearrange the parens, and we can go back by pressing B. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Um, uh, are all the sly uh, uh, key bindings um, uh, already mapped to um, your space max uh, um, your space max layer? Like, there's a bunch of them that's on the yes, sly. Yes, yes, they are all. Well, I believe like 95% of them are mapped. Okay. Um, this these commands right here that I'm running through are not part of sly. They are part of the sly layer um, by means of uh, uh, another package. That okay. takes care of these key bindings, but this I haven't gotten to the space uh, to the slice uh, key bindings yet. Okay, this you. is um, this is just basic editing right here, um, and I'll actually get to the slide part right now. So we have um, we have a REPL and we have a source buffer. Let's go to the REPL first. I'll show you the slide commands for the REPL. All um, all mode commands start with a comma. So if we type comma in the REPL, it'll pop up a menu here. We can quit, we can disconnect the REPL, we can restart Lisp. Let's restart Lisp. It's going to restart it. We have a fresh Lisp image now. We don't have to exit out of space max. We don't have to close any buffers. We just type comma R. It has completion, so we can just type comma R, enter. It's going to restart our REPL for us. We have a fresh image. Nothing is quick loaded. Just CL user. Um, as it was fresh. I like to do that a lot, and I like to do clear REPL a lot. Um, when you have tens of thousands of lines, um, clearing the REPL is going to free some memory for you. Things are going to run faster. I like to do that a lot. And I always restart my Lisp REPL once in a while um, to make sure everything works still. Because when you're live developing, you can get into some consistency issues with as far as what's on file and what's loaded into your image. So I like to restart my image and clear the REPL. That's basically all I use the comma command in the REPL for. Um, we also have comma commands and search buffers, and that has a lot. Um, everything is split up into submenus. If we type comma and then well, comma, we already, comma, single quote, we already did earlier, and that's going to start up Sly. If we do comma and then C, it's going to bring up the compile menu. And there we can do pretty much anything that has to do with compilation, such as reloading the file. We could load the file right into our image by pressing L. And it's going to ask us for the file to confirm. And we haven't quick loaded this, so we got an error. <laughs> Um, comma, there's evaluate, 
and that has all right let me quick load a, a project so that we can see how this works Uh, why isn't this working? Oh, I see. This okay, is a fresh. I, this is a fresh install, right. so you have to go and add your your project into um, dot Roswell slash uh, local projects, right? Oh yeah, you're right. I forgot about that part. That's what I. Okay. So if we go to our home directory and then cd into dot Roswell. Um, yeah, you can see there's a local projects. Normally you stick your own files, uh, your own common Lisp systems in here, and they're automatically picked up by Quick Lisp. Um, what I like to do is I just symbolic link my, um, my real project directory, which is projects Lisp, into this folder. Uh, I'll just name it local. And now we see we have a sim link in there. And now everything should be picked up. If we restart our, our Lisp image, I'm a R again. And now we quick load something that's local and it should load right up. Thanks for bringing that up. I totally forgot about that. No problem. I, I, I periodically forget myself when I'm running multiple Lisps in different Yes, directions. all your local projects, they should be long in um, if you're using Roswell, they have to belong in your home directory dot Roswell slash local projects, um, whether via symlink or directly into that folder, they have to be in there some means or another, unless you want to start messing with uh, ASDF, which I don't recommend as you're first starting up. Um, managing too many folders like that gets confusing. Interesting. We have a problem with string case. Is there a bug in here? Wow, that's that's a new one. Um, did um, you have a did you have a local project that this project depended on? Um, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I have. I I've been running SPCL one four seven for the last month or two. Um, and installing Roswell just installed one four nine. So I'm not sure if that was the issue or not, but let me just load up something else. I don't, I don't want to debug that right now. Gotcha. Um, let's see. Okay, we can another local project. I'm trying to. Remember here, okay, so we got a project loaded. Um, if I open that file in space back, remember it's space FF for find file, and we can navigate through this menu to find whatever um, project we want. I'm going to load project. Another nice thing about space max is that once you open a project file, if you type in space P for project and then F for project files, it's going to show you a menu of all the files that belong to that Git repository. Um, no matter where they are and what subdirectory or whatnot, it's going to show you the whole list of files for that Git repository. And that's, that's easy when you're trying to switch back and forth between files of the same project. You just type space PF for project files. It's really handy. I really recommend using that feature. Um, so yeah, we got, a, we got a project loaded. And I was walking you through the space max key bindings under comma E. Um, comma EF is going to reevaluate a defun. And we can see on the bottom. That it did reevaluate. Yeah, you're getting also a warning in the in the REPL too. Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I oh, think, that's, that's normal. That yeah, just that's means normal. that we're yeah. redefining it. Right, exactly. I think that that's fine. Yep, yeah, that's normal. Um, yeah, space E is usually for um, um, EF, which is going to evaluate uh, defund. Um, I don't think it has to be a defund. I think it can be any top-level form. Let me just confirm that. Like I said, this is not my normal space max configuration, so I'm not used to this stuff. Um, comma, E, F. Yep, it could be any top-level form. Um, we also have comma, G. And that is really, really nice. Um, if you're familiar with the normal Emacs um, slime configuration, that is just like M period, where you can jump to source locations. Um, you can, let me, let me see here. I'm going to put it on this. I'm typing comma, G. And it's going to pop up another menu here. We can jump to definition. We can jump to definition in the other window. We can... I want to worry about anything else right now, but let's just worry about G and capital G. If we type in G, it's going to jump to the definition. That menu is not going away, so we can just press G again without the initial commands we started it with. It's going to ask us which slap value we want to jump to. We can drill down here as far as we want, just by pressing G and moving around. Um, and then we can press B to go back. And if we want to exit the menu, we can press Q. Um, that's really handy. Um, jumping around the definitions like that without exiting the menu, uh, just for really quickly, you know, inspecting what a function does or whatnot. That is pretty easy to do. Um, that's G. Help is going to be everything about introspecting your common lisp image, um, who calls a function, um, pretty much everything. You can disassemble a symbol, look up symbols in the hyperspec, describe a symbol, we'll describe a symbol. Uh, we press comma, H for help, H again for describe symbol, and it's going to pop up the description of that symbol. Um, we can press Q to get out of anything. Um, we, if we press Q here, <laughs> that's going to be broken. Um, that's something i got to work on, I guess. That mode is not mapped for my sly layer. Forget about Q. Um, we can close out of it anyway by pressing space BD for buffer delete. And that'll bring us back to where we were. Um, i got work to do on that, I guess. Um, comma M is for macros. And do I have any macro? Yeah, right here. Okay. Um, so we have a macro here that I defined called with, with buffer read. And if we wanted to say expand that, let's, let's, let's do a call to that so we can show how that works. Um, We'll just type in anything here just to show that it works. Okay, so if we type in comma M, we're in the macro mode. Um, and then we type e, e. No, I'm sorry, S. If we type in, let me start over. If we type in comma M, S, it's going to pop up another one of those menus where if we press E, we can expand it. And what happened? Okay. Um, parsing arguments. Oh, I see. Sequence is first. I, I got the sig I got the signature wrong for that macro. Yeah. Let me let me start over here. That was that was an API problem. That wasn't anything to do with the 
space x uh, string t. You have two keys there, though. You have stream and sequence. But yeah, if we type in comma m to bring up the macro mode, and type in s, that is going to bring up this uh, menu here where we can do all sorts of stuff as far as expand and, and collapse it. If we type in E, we can expand it right in our source buffer. We don't have to open up another window or an, another buffer. It just expands it in line into our source buffer. Um, it's really not in the file. It's not modifying the buffer. This is just a view that it's showing you. Um, and we can continue to drill down the um, macro expansion by pressing E some more. Unfortunately, there's no more expansion left in this, so I can't show you that. But we can also press C to go back. And you can drill down and collapse it as much as you'd like, just like when you're jumping to definitions. Um, and then to go back, say, say we're expand, expanded here. If we press Q, it's going to bring the buffer back to its state on um, as if before you entered that mode. It's, it's, it's going to show you that the expansion is not modifying the buffer. By quitting out of that, you're bringing it back to normal. But it's really handy if you want to see what a macro expands to. Just type in comma ms and then expand with e. You're expanding it right into your buffer. You can see exactly what it's doing without opening another file or, or whatnot. That's a really nice feature to have. And that is that is part of Sly right there. It's um, actually a third-party package that hooks into Sly uh, by the same author called Sly Macro Expand. And stickers, I'm not going to explain. Uh, that can get that can get really complex. Um, it's basically an alternative to print debugging. Instead of littering your source file with all these prints to show you what a function is doing and when they're getting called and whatnot, you can use stickers. Which, to be honest, I don't use that much, so I can't really say much about it. But it, they are really nice um, once you get the hang of them. It's a way to um, annotate functions or symbols with values. And as those functions or symbols get evaluated, those, um, those annotations are being updated. And you can replay the history, the entire history of all those values. You can go back in time and inspect what a symbol was at a given time, etc. Um, it's a really nice feature to have. It does take some reading of the manual to get a hang of. Um, that's pretty much out of the scope of this little tutorial here because it does get a little involved. And there's a lot of commands under stickers. If I hit S, you can see there's, well, there's only six exposed in my sly layer. But it is, it is, it's a pretty complex feature. And I do recommend reading the manual about it if you want to know more about it. It is, it's, it's nice to know, um, it's nice to have um, as an alternative to print debugging. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. Um, it's just a nice feature. I, I can't really explain it because I don't use it much myself. Comma, lowercase s, is for REPL commands. Um, and that's basically going to give you the same commands as if you were just to type comma in the REPL, these commands. They're also exposed in the source code buffers with comma lowercase s. Comma capital T is not anything to do with the common list style error. It's just something that SpaceMax threw in there recently with an update. I'm not sure um, what it's for. You can ignore that one completely. In space, comma, T is for tracing. Um, that's that's just like tracing as you were to trace in slime. Um, Ram, you may be familiar with this. I don't really trace that often when I develop common lisp, so I really can't say much about that. Have you done any tracing? I've done a little tracing. Um, to be honest, uh, I don't. I can't think of any specific examples here where um, it would work. Like uh, maybe like a recursive function might be. Um, yeah, I would come. I'd have to come up with an example to to show off the tracing features um, uh, in uh, inside um, Sly because I was actually playing around with it the other day. It just 
I just don't recall what was the example that I was playing around with it, right? So, um, yeah. Uh, when, when we get through, our, when we actually start doing like more of the, the, the graphics programming projects, um, I, I could totally show you how, how the tracing would work um, in those cases, because there are a couple of use cases where I would use it there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is for the um, space map or for the slide commands. Um, everything else is just getting familiar with space max. Um, like I said, everything to do with Lisp editing is going to be under the space K command. And like I said, you can wrap in another pair of friends. You can get rid of the extra pair of friends with unwrap. Um, everything is a single key under space K. And that's for all Lisp editing commands. Another nice thing that's not under space K for Lisp editing commands is that we have something called structurally safe editing. And that means that if I were to delete, say, this line right here, it's not going to delete that extra open paren right there. It's going to leave that intact. It's going to preserve the balance of our parentheses, and that's really nice to have. If we press DD to delete the line, as in Vim commands, DD, that extra paren is still there. We have not unbalanced the parens. You could do whatever you want as far as deleting and inserting text and Space Max is going to go through every effort not to mess up your parens. That is something that's not common with um, regular Emacs par edit or anything like that. That is something built right into Space Max. That's, um, that's by, I think, um, by, evil clever parens that's at work. Yes, yes, that's that's built into Space Max um, with by using that package you right now. Okay. Uh, um, that's that's all out of box. You don't have to do anything to enable that. Um, that is that's an incredibly good feature to have right there. Um, mm -hmm. It's you don't know how many times I had to go back and try to find that single paren that was somehow messed up in the middle of a thousand line source buffer. <laughs> Um, can I ask a question? Um, yeah. For this case, like your def, your your buffer, I see you have a couple of um, common um, functions. Like, do you have an example where you 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 defined a couple of methods with like a generic uh, a generic function? Um, uh, I was curious if um, uh, Sly had any way to like inspect to see what methods are available for um, for a given um, given object, oh. like. I think there is one, but I don't remember. Well, sort of. Um, let me let me see if I can think of um, a file that I have a lot of generic functions for. Um, I don't see any generic functions in this file. No, there's no generic function in this file. Your question was to see if, if Sly had a way to tell if um, what methods belong to it. Like belong to a generic function. Yeah, what it what it, what it's specialized on for generic function. Okay, let me let me see here um, because that's pretty useful. <laughs> um, that's not that's not in that project. Oh, okay, right here. We just opened one of my projects here. I'm pretty sure this has a lot of methods. Um, search for def method. Yes, okay. So this project has a lot of def method, def methods. Um, if we were to, well, actually, let me try to find a call site. Um, how is that done again? Help. Who calls? What happened? Oh, I hit it too many times. There's no reference. It looks like. Oh, I never, I never quick quoted this project. Hold on a sec. So, Sly, who calls? And type check calls type check 
cool. Okay. So if we wanted to inspect this um, generic function here, type check rule, to see what methods it had, what we could do as a hack is to type in comma g and go to definition. It's going to pop up a list of all the methods for that generic function. Nice. Okay. So is, does that answer your question? Yeah, it's it's the same thing like in slime. I I know how to do this in slime. I was just wondering what was um, uh, in your yeah. in your bindings. I, how, you I mean, can still do the slime way of typing m period. Uh -huh. That would still get you the same effect as typing uh, comma g g to jump to definition. It's just a, a friendlier alias, I guess, using the the vim style key bindings rather than em all the emacs key bindings are still there as far as I know. Okay. I, I don't use them, but I think they're all still there. Okay. I mean, if you get lost and you, you're used to doing Emacs way, go for it. Don't stress trying to learn all these commands. Uh, learn little bits at a time because, I mean, mm -hmm. Vim and Emacs are both huge projects with lots of commands. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm bringing up some of the common things that I, I know most people who are going to get started would, um, would totally yeah. have a question on. But um, but yeah, it just brings up that list, and you can click on or type enter on any one of them, and it'll jump into that definition. Um, whenever there's any ambiguity in what to jump to, it will pop up that list asking you which one you'd like to jump to. Um, now, that's pretty much all there is to um, to the sly layer, um, bar stickers, which I don't know enough about to explain, and it's pretty complex, like I said. What I'd like to do is, um, Ram, you said you had some problems installing the layer earlier. Yes. I would, I would like to see what problems you had, because I'm sure if you had it, other people might have it. Absolutely. And maybe I, I will, can fix that. I will go through, this is, this is going to be on Mac, folks. Um, but, I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen here, Okay. if and, I can figure out how. And let me, let me share my screen. Uh, do, do you go here, go to, share this. Oh, we got a lot of visitors today, huh? Yes, a lot of, and does anybody have any questions, first off, before, before we go through this, this, this section here? Uh, I see we have a couple new ones, uh, new people. I know, um, Space Max is a change of, change of pace here, but since we're going to get started on, I would say a fairly decently sized. Um, the only reason why I'm trying to bring Space Max up, how to configure Space Max, is because it, it, it basically has all the common list functionality you would want out of the box once you install this common list layer. And you don't have to worry about going through months and months and months of setting up Emacs like I did. Um, as a newcomer to Emacs, it took me quite a while to set common list development up. I initially started my common list development with Vim, and moving to Emacs was just a nightmare. Uh, Michael? Yes. Yeah, this is Winston. So I'm you, and I missed the first part. Uh, so what uh, list implementation are you using? SBCL. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we went and we installed SBCL by means of Roswell. I'm not sure if you heard of Roswell before. Not to know there. Um, yeah, this should be up on YouTube later if you want to check it out. It'll install um, SBCL along with Quick, Quick Lisp and everything all integrated by installing Roswell. Um, that should be up on YouTube on the AFP channel later. Yes, and additionally, Winston, um, I will post um, links to Roswell on the Meetup page so that you can actually uh, uh, just directly link to them um, and just follow the YouTube video to, to step through and install and uh, navigate through the actual development environment. And excuse me if I miss this, Ram, but um, um, are you still planning to meet tomorrow? Yes, um, our workshop is going to be at um, ATDC, um, which is at the Synergy Building. Um, I was going to announce it a little later, but I'll, I will just, you know, in this intermission, just mention it. Um, for all those that are in the Atlanta area, I am planning on having um, this an, a workshop that will exactly go through um, setting this all up. Um, at the Atlanta Technology Development Center at the Synergy Building, which is in Georgia Tech, um, on Georgia Tech's campus, um, from 6 o'clock um, in the evening to 7.30. Um, come by. Um, we will go through installing not only Space Max but, and, and um, a, a basic co common list implementation using Roswell, but 
I was also going to navigate you through the basics of the language as well, so that um, uh, folks that are just starting to look through the Commonwealth Study Group um, videos that are on YouTube in our YouTube channel, um, it will help you uh, navigate through those videos if you're just starting um, uh, today on getting getting started with Commonwealth. How is the parking? Um, the parking there is actually fairly nice. There is a parking garage right behind um, the Synergy Building. Um, if you're coming in um, from Spring Street, um, uh, if you uh, it, and there is there is par uh, like like parking like you know, meters uh, metered parking around around Georgia Tech's campus as well. Um, if you if that that's not if if you can't find the parking lot that's near um, the Synergy Building. It's it, but it is right behind the Center U building. The I'm forgetting the name of the, the street right now, unfortunately. Um, I I can I after this um um I could just uh I'll mention it uh, where where to park on on the meetup meetup page too as well. Thank you. No no problem. Um, any other questions regarding um uh, Sly and uh, uh in general? Okay, so. Um, let me just share my screen here. I was sharing it earlier, but I apologize. Let me just, uh, and while he's doing that, um, let me just mention that if you're new to Common Lisp, and uh, especially Emacs, um, I would not recommend um, trying to use another editor. <laughs> um, Common Lisp development, since Common Lisp is so customizable, uh, we actually require an editor with uh, that digs into the common Lisp system, and it's not just an editor. You're actually modifying your Lisp image as you code. Uh, I would not recommend using any other editor. It's I, I say this a lot, but it's like using Java and Notepad. <laughs> um, Emacs or Spacemax is really the way to go. Um, I would recommend taking the time to learn them if you don't. So I'm going to go ahead um, just so that um, uh, you see the exact error. What I did is, is, is first off, um, I went into. Uh, so this is this is a clone of the SpaceMax um, development environment, folks. Um, already, um, and based on our earlier discussions, what I did was is I went and checked out the the develop branch um, uh, from the SpaceMax um, repository. And um, what I did was, is in my dot space max, I didn't actually move this into an init.pl just for the time being. Um, where did I move it? Oh, I did, I did actually move it. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to move it back to where I had it before because this didn't work well during our tutorial. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm curious where it's messing up for you. I want to see. If so what I did was, is, is, um, I went ahead and added um, commonless fly to the layer um, to, to yep. my dot space max. Um, so let me show you my desktop so you guys can all see what actually happens. Um, this is probably easier. Um, let me stop presenting. Give me a second. Um, I'm going to have to do this. This is easier. Um, my entire screen. All right. Present to everyone. I do apologize, folks. Um, okay, so when I do Emacs, here's what happens. It loads up Emacs, it loads up, which, you know, it loads up Space Max, it attempts to uh, compile and I get this error, which is... Um, oh, what is it? Um, configuration layer package used P. Function is void, so... And that's that only if I add your your com your layer to my my configuration file. Now it could very well be, and I haven't tried this yet um, because I have Haskell in that file too as well. If you notice, um, because I was trying to set this up also for Haskell development, it could be that there might be a dependency in the Haskell layer that is interfering with the Common Lisp layer. But I, I don't. don't I don't think so. That 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 is basically saying that one of the SpaceMax built-in functions is missing. Um, but this is weird because it, it when I get rid of this, whether you're really undeveloped with the latest develop uh, commit or really 
does it does it work with the um, with the alternate configuration like I walked you through with the dot spacemax.d directory with the init file inside? I have not actually tried that just yet. That might be required. No. I've never set it up any other way. Um, okay. So and I know there is some similar issues uh, if you don't do that. So I would I would recommend. Can we try that? Can you try that right now? Yeah, sure. So you want me to go ahead and move this? It's create that directory, the dot spacemax dot d folder. And you yeah, want go ahead and create the dot spacemax dot d folder. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there anything in there currently? Uh, there shouldn't be, but I think um, I'll just go and do this. Uh, All right. Yeah, there's nothing in here. Okay, go ahead and create a layers folder in that folder. Okay. Sorry. All right. Okay, now move your .spacemax file. Make sure it's out of the way completely by moving it into there as init.el. slash init.el. Okay, and now you want me to go ahead and in here... You and want... and now and now move your common Lisp sly uh, folder into the layers folder. Okay, so give me a second. I had it in, in my emacs.d slash layers folder. Uh, common Lisp sly. You're saying that this should be in the spacemax.d slash layers. Yes. All right. So let me see if this works. Now let's see what we get. Let me do this. Um, it might be that it's in an inconsistent state. Ah. Hold on. It might be that it's in an inconsistent state and as a result, what's happening is is um, it's uh, it's not actually uh, updating the layer layers. So let me start from scratch here. Give me a second. Okay. What it's doing now, it's deleting the previous install to make sure everything is uh, uh, back to normal. Excellent. Okay. FQ. No, it's not. I keep forgetting what it is. Screw it. I got used to it, actually. <laughs> Doing this in uh... okay. Let me go and add this guy back. Okay. Gonna take a minute here. Installing a bunch of bunch of these parameters. Yeah, it's on Sly Repl ANSI color that it's failing on. Sly Repl ANSI color. Um, let me pull that up in my my code right now. See what's going on with that. Um, uh, actually, can can we try? Um, just to do the other part of my um, my tutorial, can we try to delete or back up .emacs.d in clone space max? Oh, um, one, w once again? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Yeah, passing the dash b um, develop branch. Yeah, sure. So you want me to... Get, get clone. Hold on. So let me, let, me, let me go to the space max website here. Space max. Because that's just strange. I mean, I I did the same thing minus that, and on stream right now, and miraculously everything worked. Okay, so you need to copy this. All right. And then, so since this is a brand new, I just did this earlier today. I'm just going to go and remove it. Don't okay. do this, folks, at home. Yeah. But. <laughs> Make sure you back up. <laughs> But this is this is this is a clean one from. And then back up your backup. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So now I'll do a git clone. Uh, sorry, for some reason, copy uh, copy link address on. All right. Yep, and then um, at the end you can type dash b, b develop. develop, and then space, um, then your home directory slash dot emacs dot d. That'll clone it right into your right. required folder. And that shouldn't take very long. It's a small project. All right. Okay. So now. Um, yeah, now try starting it up. Uh, sure, I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. This is going to take a few minutes. All right, it's got to download all the packages. Right. Um. Well, let me. You said it happened in the the common list sly. Um, the sly anti color up. Oh, sly repel anti color. Yeah. Okay. So let me see about that. So uh, while this is um, going on, um, folks on the on the on the, on the group, uh, I'm just kind of curious uh, as to um, uh, if um, if any of you had a chance to at least play around with um, with Sly before the Space Max tutorial, and what were your experiences? Uh, Judd, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I've used Sly for the last few days since I, uh, I don't know, recently in installed it with Roswell. So, um, no, no issues so far. Looks great. Um, have you had a chance to do any of the tracing stuff that? Um, uh... yeah. No, I haven't. Sly's killer feature is actually that stickers feature that I was mentioning that I I didn't get to walk you through. Um, I would I would really recommend reading the Sly manual. Uh, there's a PDF of it, I believe, on, on the on the GitHub page. It's it's really really great. You can walk through the whole history of of, of the values um, a symbol had during or a function or whatever it had during that symbol's lifetime. Uh, it's it's it totally replaces print debugging um, it, without modifying your source buffer whatsoever. It's it's an it's that's like its killer feature. But not to mention, Sly has a lot of bug fixes. Um, over slime that slime still has yet to incorporate. Well, so those books sound great. Uh, cannot open file bind map. What? Why are you getting these weird issues? I'm telling from? you, man. I, I, told, <laughs> I told you this is this is this is precisely why I was I've been sticking with using normal Emacs and Sly. So I mean Sly. Yeah, actually Emacs and Sly, not Emacs and Sly. What Emacs version are you running? Can you can you do um yeah, meta sure. shift colon meta shift colon. Okay. And then type in like Emacs dash version, I think it is. I think it's twenty five point two point one. Huh. That should be pretty pretty good enough. I I don't know. Yeah. So you know what? I will I will table this. I'll try and get to the latest Emacs on Mac and make sure that it all works. Otherwise, I'm sticking with Sly and <laughs> Emacs instead of Space Max for the time being. Um, so one question I had, um, uh, uh, Michael, since we're all here, because um, we're going to be talking about also web programming in, in, in some future study groups. Um, Judd and I were having a conversation yesterday about you know, Lisp web servers. Um, and, you know, while it seems to be, like, you know, recommended to use Hunch and Toot, have you tried any of the other common Lisp web servers that are out there, like Wookie or Woo or... Um, All right, well, about that. Um, I would not recommend using Hunch and Toot um, for the reason because... Um, are you familiar with Clack? Yes, I am familiar with Clack, but even Clack, um, Fukumachi-san uses Hunch and Toot by default, unless you go and change the um, right. But if you're if you're developing a web server 
um, using the Clack framework, you're actually writing a web server for all different web servers. Okay. Um, by using Clack, you can replace the web server without changing any code whatsoever. Okay, right. I, I understand that, um, and I do I do agree with you. I'm just I'm just kind of curious about deployment too. Like, would you use? Have you tried any of the other? Um, for, for, for see, I usually use Clack, okay. and I develop with Hunch and Toot. But then when I deploy, I I, I change the web server that Clack uh, uses behind the scenes to Woo, and Woo is. Um, um, can someone please mute their mic? <laughs> Somebody, yeah. Uh, can I break in a little bit? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Michael, it sounds like I'm going to want to do something similar to your, what you do. So the only reason I need this, uh, I want a web server, is so that I have something for to send um, HTTP requests from Drachma. I want to send them somewhere and then see what the heck arrived, right? So as a little pr project to, you know, get get more used to doing things kind of an organized, in an organized fashion with projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, I want to have a, I want to make a Lisp uh, function that given a name for a project, we'll go ahead and uh, create uh, a skeleton, uh, a quick project, and then also go and uh, get in it it and do git add and, and uh, git commit and git push. But in order to do that, there needs to be um, a matching rep repository on GitHub. At least that's what I'm aiming at right now. So I'd like to send, it looks pretty simple. I've, I've looked at version three of the Git uh, GitHub API and it's just a post request with like one key value pair, which is name and then name of the project you want. And that's all I want to start off with. And I can start getting fancier and, and, you know, what happens if there's already a repo like that, et cetera, et cetera. But that's why I want to set up a hunch and two. And I've got it set up and running. So now I'm running into a variety of other little teeny niggling issues. Right now I'm wrestling with um, how to run uh, command line commands from, from Lisp. I'm using um, inferior shell. So that's where I am. Okay, um, I, to be honest, I haven't used Hunch and Toot in about <laughs> 10 years, <laughs> so, um, and I, I, I've never used Inferior Shell, I, I don't even know what that is. Okay, um, I don't, what, what I'm saying is I don't need any performance, right, I don't need, I don't need to serve billions of pages, I yeah, just I, want to be able okay. to go and look and see what came through in the request, and then, um, what else, oh, Inferior shell is just uh, a way to. Um, it's by Fukumachi as well, and it's a way to, um, you know, execute. Basically, type in stuff, and it, it gets executed at the shell. Essentially, you want something like stuff, Netcat, right? In. You essentially want something like Netcat, where you're listening on a port, and and you wrote something, and you want to see what the what the what the what the request was sent over, right? That'll work too. That would work too. Um, yeah, I think I've seen, uh, we, we, I didn't, I didn't understand it before, but I think I, 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 I've seen somebody actually try and create a Netcat equivalent in pure common list. I'll, I'll look it up and um, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, I don't, I don't remember where I, I, I found it. I think it was on Clicky where I, where I looked it up. Okay. Um, well, maybe I'll put commentary on, you know, what I'm trying to do up on, the meetup uh, page and the YouTube channel page. Now that we're multimedia, yeah, absolutely. Um, get get more folks involved in the in the project and get the discussion in. Um, one other thing I wanted to actually ask um, uh, Michael um, Piano what, uh, is is uh, for actually for because we were going to get started on um, I would say an introduction to. Uh, I'm hoping graphics programming soon. Um, are there any recommendations for graphics libraries to start looking at, um, or um, any any sort of tutorials or anything like that that we should be? I I really I really hope to introduce some of these soon. Okay. Um, I I wanted to walk through you know getting the editor set up first. I'm shooting for um, two weeks from now. I, I think I I think I need a um, a week to prepare to do that. 
So I'm not sure that I will um, be presenting anything next week. Okay. Um, Ron, if you had something you wanted to do, um, I could use oh, it. Oh, certainly. I, I, but I do <laughs> want to start introducing graphics libraries, um, like SDL2. Uh, we have CL, SDL2. Um, we have CL, OpenGL. Those are both low-level bindings to SDL2 and OpenGL, respectively. And then there's some higher-level things built on top of that. And then there's some game um, game development libraries, like, you know, for um, managing a game loop and loading images and we have all sorts of library. I, I've been doing game development in Commonless for about 10 years now and um, I and a few other people have collaborated on quite a few libraries that are very useful for doing graphics programming and games in general. So I, I, I really want to start introducing them because they get little attention and I'm always asked like what's good for this and what's good for that. Nobody <laughs> seems to know where to look. Uh, despite us having a Lisp Games uh, wiki online, nobody seems to check there. So I really <laughs> want to do a live stream and start introducing this stuff. Um, I'm planning for like two weeks from today. Okay, to sweet. Well, one thing that I am going to bring up, and that is something that I was um uh, I was hoping that we can we can get up to um is is um the series library um which I've been playing around with recently um. And Never messed with that. That's for the CLTL2 stuff, right? Yes, that is for the CLTL2 thing. And then it was also where it led me to dealing with, um, because I was kind of curious as to how um, type classes, which is a Haskell-specific thing, were done in Common Lisp. And that's how I was introduced to type case, which I also saw you using in your code, um, which <laughs> um, we, we, can, we, can, we can discuss in, um, in, in um, next week. Um, but really, it's um, I want to start with the series library and trivial gray streams because um, people need to be aware of um, trivial gray streams. Um, well, actually, not trivial gray streams. I should re that's really low level. I, it was mentioned that I should use flexi streams instead. Actually, uh -huh. I would recommend that you use well, depending on what you want to do. But fast IO fast um, IO actually uses I believe it uses trivial gray streams, um, but it also um, has a faster way of doing thing, doing thing. I think that's a fallback. Fast.io um, fast is very fast for writing streams and buffers in common list. It's It basically replaces a lot of flexi streams. Okay, so I'm just going to show this to you guys on the stream for those of you who are joining us. Um, uh, Fast.io, this is the reference. Flexi, flexi streams does a whole lot more. You might have to use flexi streams depending on what you want to do. But Fast.io is, is a very good library if you need fast performance. <laughs> I, I use it in a lot of my code, and it just hands down way faster than um, flexi streams for a lot of things. But we need to start with user defined streams and build our way up to some of. I think yeah, this is yeah. essentially what uh, is what I'm trying to get at because um, uh, folks, um, if you want to start get, getting to like GUI programming, for example, there is a very well known um, GUI library. Well, I'm going to mention what uh, the the well known one and what a lot of people also use today. There are two. One is uh, McClim, uh, which is the common Lisp interface manager um, that's co that's used, and the basis of that architecture, the software architecture, is actually streams. Um, uh, looking into the specification, giving a little bit of history, in fact, a lot of the streams design uh, stemmed from the project of trying to do streams inside um, the interface manager project. Uh, and um, the Klim specification actually has its um, a very similar design to what ultimately went into um, gray streams, which is what trivial gray streams and all the higher level gray stream li um, streams libraries were built off of. Uh, but to get to that level, to understand how to use McClim and stuff, you need to understand a little bit about what streams are um, in in the Lisp sense, um, uh, and uh, that's where um, we will get started um, next week. Um, since it'll it will it'll be a more of like a, a introductory library episode um, to teach you how to do user defined um, streams. Uh, on top of that, um, I like I said, I'm going to also mention um, the series library, which is another thing that is built on streams, um, but it's a different data structure. It's a different library. They'll give you lazy evaluated sequences, um, so you can do some nice little functional programming. Um, more pure functional programming, that is, than what is already available to you in the common list level. Uh, one of the nice things about um, uh, the series library is, is 
not only do you get that native data structure in the series, but um, a lot of stuff that you could do in Haskell become possible, um, primarily dealing with lazy evaluated sequences. Um, additionally, uh, there's a feature in series that's actually now being recently popularized in Clojure called transducers um, that's available also. But um, the difference between the newer transducers that are being popularized by Clojure and series version is, is, as far as I can tell from the documentation and my understanding of how series does transducers, um, which to give you a little bit of a background, transducers is basically transforming from one series object to another series object functionally without having to deal with um, intermediate objects being created. So it's a little bit more memory efficient. Um, and that's what Clojure also does. But Clojure does it in a parallel way. And series was designed at a time where I can only, I can only guess that they did it sequentially from the tests that I've done, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I'm going to also show that to you as well. Um, um, yeah, sure. Question? Uh, uh, yeah, it's Winston again. Uh, okay. So you, Michael, and Judd have mentioned a lot of projects and programs tonight. Uh, so like uh, for tomorrow, what programs would you think would be the most important to install beforehand? Or uh, Really just Roswell. Um, we'll go through the rest. Roswell will take care of installing everything you need. Um, it really integrates... SP or whatever Lisp implementation you want to use um, along with Click Lisp. It bundles those together, makes it painless. You don't have to install anything, you just install Roswell and you're good to go. Okay, thank you. You yep. still need you still need an editor like SpaceMax or Emacs though. Okay. Does a SpaceMax run on Windows? Yes, yeah, SpaceMax does run on Windows. Um, all three major operating systems, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, except if you're around and you have all these weird bugs. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'll talk to you later online about that. Um, Winston, the best thing to do is download Emacs off of, um, I think, GNU's website. Um, for Windows, they have an installer. Um, and then um, from there, uh, you should be able to just follow the instructions that we showed in this YouTube video. Uh, on installing Space Max, and you'll be good to go. Okay, all right. All right. Yeah, excuse me if I missed that part. Okay, thank you. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. And I'm looking forward to meeting you, uh, too, as well. And anybody else who's in the Atlanta area, please, 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 come join us um, for this workshop uh, tomorrow. Um, we start at 6 p.m. Uh, we go till 7.30 over at the Synergy Building. Um, and um, we'll be talking all things LISP. And hopefully, uh, I can uh, show you a couple of things uh, that will dispel myths on, on common list that, uh, that are, for some reason, people still believe is true today. Uh, <laughs> uh, but until next time, thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Michael Fiano, for um, uh, presenting to us how to install and set up quick um, Sly with SpaceMax and um, giving us a little bit of an introduction to the common list Sly layer. Um, Next week, we're going to be talking, we're going to really be talking about series and hopefully um, streams to us a little bit to get us prepared for um, hopefully what will be a very interesting project discussion um, the following week um, or two weeks after that. Um, so until next time, this is Ron Vadum. Thanks for joining us. And, um, hey, Ron. I'd like to add, can you, are you still here? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to start. Well, I'm continuing to promote uh, events with the Atlanta Functional Programming Meetup, and so the things that I'm, the targets that I have right now are a couple of uh, hacker spaces in Atlanta and some, <laughs> some of the other meetup groups that are relevant. So if any of you um, know of people that I could ask to forward a, a nice, polite, uh, not super hypey message, please uh, let me know. You can hit me at, um, at the meetup page, or if you want, well... Yeah, anyway, that'd be a, a, you know, get in touch with me, please. Um, we're doing really well. It's a nice venue, and uh, we want to get a lot of people there to crowd out. Yeah. Um, one more announcement um, uh, coming up is is uh, look up uh, to our Meetup page for future announcements on um, uh, future coming uh, uh, Meetups that are we're going to be doing. We do once a month talks at um, every first Tuesday of every month um, over at ATDC. But on top of that, we have our weekly um, Haskell meetup as well as the Commonless Virtual Study meetup, which has now switched 
This is our permanent um, day now um, until further notice, which is every Monday at 6 p.m. till uh, well, 5.30 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. So uh, that's about it. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later.